Hello and welcome to Aging Matters, a program featuring people who talk about issues of interest to older adults and their families. I'm Cheryl Beversdorf, your host. Today, Aging Matters offers another Stories of Life program where we introduce guests who talk about how their life experience made a difference to them and to their community. My guest is Craig Syfix, President Emeritus of the Black Heritage Museum of Arlington and descendant of Charles and Maria Syfix, patriarch and matriarch of the prominent Syfix family who became civic leaders, civic servants, and educators in the greater Washington, D.C. area. Craig will talk about the legacy of prestige, accomplishment, and perseverance of Syfix family members and the roles they played in the religious, social, educational, and civil advancement of African American communities in Arlington County. Craig will also discuss the Black Heritage Museum of Arlington and its efforts to preserve historic items relevant to the Black history of Arlington County in Northern Virginia. A short video about the museum will be shown during the program. So welcome, Craig, and thank you for joining me today. Hey, glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me, Cheryl. Okay, well, let's get started by having you explain what were the circumstances that led to your forebears originally living in Arlington County? Let's start there. Um, George Washington Park Custis is the individual that built Arlington House, which is the house that is at the top of the Arlington Cemetery. And he is George Washington, the president's grandson, adopted grandson. So when he moved from Mount Vernon, well, he bought the property where Arlington Cemetery is, and he built the house. And as he was building the house, once he needed people and things, he brought some of the slaves over with him from okay. Mount Vernon. And so what year are we talking about? I kind of want to get a context in terms of when the story of your family began. Well, we're talking roughly around 1803 probably is when George Washington Park Custis left Mount Vernon originally and started building the house. Okay. And help us understand where does the name Syphix come from? What, what does it mean? It's an unusual name, and so we want to know more about it. Uh, as all families have, they have uh, stories from this part of the world, this part of the country, and things like that. The most common story that we have is that uh, one of the slaves that was at Mount, that was at Mount Vernon told Charles Syfax that he looked like King Syfax from Nibia. And so he, st he ran with it from there. We feel his name was William Anderson, and he changed his name to Charles Syfax. And that's where it started. And that is the story I'm sticking with. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. And w we also understand or were told that there was Freedman's Village, and that was associated with the beginning of the Syfix family. Is that correct? Uh, somewhat. Uh, the beginning of the Syfax family was prior to that because Freedman's Village was 1863 and uh, Mariah Syfax, who Charles Syfax married, Mariah Syfax was the daughter of George Washington Park Custis. He had relations with one of his enslaved mates at Mount Vernon. Uh, we don't know where Mariah was actually born, but it was either Mount Vernon, Arlington, or somewhere near in between uh, where it could have, uh, she could have been birthed. So explain to us then what led to Freedman's Village. How was that established and, and where was it located? Okay. Freedman's Village came about because of an outbreak of cholera. Cholera is a stomach disease. And so General Miggs, who 
had taken over Robert E. Lee Memorial, the house that Robert, the, the, the house at Arlington, and they used that as their headquarters. So uh, the outbreak of cholera happened, so then he went to the American Military Association, which is the predecessor for the Red Cross, and he went to them and asked them how to combat this. They told him that they would need to quarantine everyone that was sick and treat them that way. And so he decided that uh, in the will, George Washington Park Custis's will, there were 17 acres to be given to his daughter, Mariah Syfax. And so the general said, we're not gonna honor that. What we're gonna do is make this 17 acres Freedman's Village. And how, how many oh, and people? The, and the second part of your question, Freedman's Village is like where Henderson Hall is today. If you are coming down Columbia Pike and turn at the Sheraton, going toward the Pentagon, there's a Sheraton. If you take that left and go all the way to the back, it'll be like a dead end. And that'll be Henderson Hall base, Marine Corps base. And some ways up the road is where the Syfax property was. 17 acres began from that corner. Okay, and how long was it in, in existence? What Freedman's led, Village? Yes, yes. Freedman's Village uh, started actually in like October, September of, of uh, 19, uh, 1863, but they didn't have the ribbon cutting until December of 1863, and it went until December 1900. And then what led to it being it torn went to down? December 19, it went to December 1899. All right. Yeah. And then what led to it being torn down? It was in existence for, for that length of time, and then ultimately it was torn Disbanded. Down. Disbanded? So the government uh, came back and said that, well, during the time that Freedman's Village was there, they had already turned it into a cemetery as a, a way to belittle Robert E. Lee because this was his house. They weren't gonna, he wasn't gonna come back to this house while they're there, you know, so they were like disrespecting him and the property by making it a cemetery. So as the graves were coming in the direction of where Freedman's Village was, they said, you have to disband. And that more or less created the black neighborhoods in South Arlington. Okay, well, and you've been talking about Mariah Syfix. Tell us a little bit more. Now, who was she and what was the sequence of events that led to her owning that home in Arlington? Like I said, Mariah was born in like 1803 and we don't know exactly where she was born to, where she was Oh, she was out of a relation with George Washington <clears throat> Park Custis and an enslaved uh, maid that he had named Ariana Carter. So Mariah came to Arlington House with George Washington Park Custis. <clears throat> she learned to read and write in the house just like any of his other kids. Um, her duties would have probably been in the house, in the kitchen, something to that effect. And when um, Freeman's Village was disbanded, Mariah had to go to court to get her, her property back. And so that was how she reclaimed her property and lived out her days on Columbia Pike. Okay. So now I want to take it a little bit closer to your uh, history of your mother, Evelyn Syfex. Talk about her and her work in the Arlington County community. Uh, Evelyn Syfax, my mother, I knew her well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she was a chairman of the Arlington School Board she was, uh, she had a nursery school for, um, for kids. 
So the people that worked at the Pentagon didn't have a child care to take their children to or anything. So she started a child care center off of Columbia Pike on the way to the Pentagon. So they dropped their kids off and, and then went to work at the Pentagon and picked them up on the way back. So she did that. She also had a Montessori school, which uh, I attended and I graduated valedictorian from. Congratulations. No, I'm just saying sure. Okay, uh, let's see, what else did she do? Uh, she had a shoe bank for people that didn't have shoes. You know, she would uh, provide shoes for people. She uh, started remedial reading in Arlington. Um, what else did she do? I could go on. She started a lot of organizations for empowering black women and just women in general. Mm, she was instrumental in segregation. And that was exactly what I wanted to hear more about. She was very much involved in school desegregation in Arlington. Is that correct? That's correct. Tell us more. Um, I would think uh, the, the, the first thing or the best thing that she mainly did was uh, teach the kids etiquette, teach them uh, how to be proper, how to speak, how to respect others, how to, at the table, how to know what's, what spoon is what, how, what fork is what, just etiquette in general and how to be a proper citizen. And then, as I understand it, she was very much involved in establishing the Black Heritage Museum of Arlington. Yep, but also with the desegregation, the four kids that started the, uh, that, that, that crossed the line in uh, Arlington, the black kids, in third grade, my mother taught all four of them. Okay. She was their third grade teacher. She started the Black Heritage Museum of Arlington because she knew there were prominent blacks that came out of the D.C., Alexandria, Arlington area and they weren't getting recognition or didn't have a museum of their own. But she mainly wanted a black uh, museum kind of thing, representing the, uh, the blacks that did so much in this area, you know, th through slavery, before and after. And she just wanted to make sure everyone remembered that this took place in this area. And that's what we're going to learn more about. So in the upcoming segment, you will see a video about the Black Heritage Museum of Arlington and what led to its establishment. So let's watch. African American history in Arlington, Virginia. A long and proud heritage. We found some really interesting things. We have some pearlware here and a shell button and two wooden or bone buttons possibly and a pipe stem and a clay marble. And these were all collected out of Selena's room. My name is Talmadge T. Williams and I'm the chairman of the board for the Black Heritage Museum of Arlington. I am involved because I want to preserve the black history of Arlington. We want to tell the story that hasn't been told. When Mrs. Lee left her home at the beginning of the Civil War, she entrusted the care of the mansion and many of her personal possessions to Selena. The Arlington House is furnished to look as it would have prior to the Civil War, based on information provided by members of the Gray family. Selena and Thornton Gray and their eight children lived in this slave quarter. From its earliest days, Arlington was home to dozens of slaves who lived and labored on the estate. The contributions of these enslaved people are a vital component of Arlington's history. The Heritage Museum of Arlington has been working closely with Arlington House, which is the Robert E. Lee Memorial at Arlington National Cemetery. Together they have created an exhibit on slave life, which includes a model of Freedman's Village, 
built by Howard University students. The federal government established Freedman's Village in 1863 as a temporary wartime refuge for emancipated and fugitive slaves. Located on the grounds of today's Arlington National Cemetery, the former Custis Lee Plantation, it was intended to help former slaves adjust to life after emancipation. Freedman's Village survived long after the Civil War, thriving for 37 years and sowing the seeds of Arlington's African-American community. Houses were built, churches, a school and hospital were established, and the government sponsored programs to give the former slaves the skills needed to succeed in a free society. It served as a model village and many famous people came to visit and study the community, including Sojourner Truth, who lived there briefly and served as the resident's voice. In 1901, Freedman's Village closed and the residents dispersed. Many stayed in the Arlington area building strong communities centered on new churches. And uh, everybody was very much into either one of those churches. And I think the churches sort of saw that you got a lot of activities that you might would have missed out on. Mount Zion Baptist, Lomax AME Zion, Mount Olive Baptist, Callaway United Methodist, St. John's Baptist, Our Lady Queen of Peace Catholic, and Macedonia Baptist are all notable churches that can be visited still today. And we all loved baseball. That was the main activity out here, was to play baseball. And you'd be surprised at the big fields that were around. And they're all gone now, but they were when I, when I grew up, yeah. Halls Hill residents created the first black volunteer fire department in the country, which later became the only all black paid fire department in U.S. history. The Black Heritage Museum of Arlington website is the first stage in sharing the history of this journey to freedom. The site includes a wealth of resources, including lesson plans for teachers. The Black Heritage Museum of Arlington sponsors lectures, annual Black Heritage Month programs, and oral history projects. They have been identifying local collections of artifacts and photographs for future acquisition by the museum. A brochure on African-American historic sites in Arlington has been created. The museum has been collaborating with the Arlington Convention and Visitor Service, Arlington Chamber of Commerce, Arlington Historical Society, and the National Park Service. I think the, hist the black history of Arlington is very important because many of our elderly people are dying and if we don't get that information documented and they leave us, it will be as if they never lived. When Ronnie was, when, we, when they were young, when we would go past uh, that school, Stratford school like that and as he was getting older and he would always just say, that's, that's the school I'm going to, that you know, because it was the next high school. <laughs> so, uh, and I never told him, I never said, oh, no, you can't, like some parents, oh, boy, you can't go to that school or anything. I never told him that. But I guess even st stemming from that probably got, well, he should be going to that school. You be proud of your liberty. On February 2nd, 1959, Stratford Junior High in Arlington was the first desegregated school in Virginia, setting the example for Virginia and much of the South. The Black Heritage Museum of Arlington needs your support as we continue our educational programs and work toward our goal of a physical museum with space for permanent and temporary exhibits. If you have an interest in preserving Arlington's Black Heritage, please consider contributing to the museum today. I hope you enjoyed learning more about the Black Heritage Museum of Arlington and the significant contributions African Americans have made in Arlington County. So learning about that, uh, I wanted to talk with you about the Black Heritage Museum. It's here now, and I understand that you were uh, a board member of the museum. So talk about your vision. What, 
what what's the status of the museum right now and what is what are the plans obviously in that film it mentioned about the the, the, the plans a little bit about the the museum what, what's the timeline here Craig uh, is it this coming year or this this new year or what what is what are your hopes and dreams about the museum we are always hopeful that we're going to find a spot so we're just in talks with different people in different uh, outfits to try and find us a suitable place in the Arlington area. And it, it is open? I mean, is it is, yes. What are the hours? Uh, right now we are Thursdays and Saturdays. Thursdays we're open from 3 to 7, and Saturdays we're open from 11 to 6. And talk about the significant features. If, if I were to go over to the museum, what would I see? Tell me more. Well, you will probably see me, of course. <laughs> and then second of all, you will see all the displays we have. We have a Syfax display. Uh, it, more, it more or less starts off with uh, the George Washington, Mount Vernon. Then it goes into the Syfax and slavery. And then uh, we have the black neighborhoods in Arlington and the churches. Right now we have a uh, Roberta Flack display, and that's what we have at the present time. And are you planning on getting more artifacts that, that you get, and where? Oh, at all times, yes. What, and how do you do that? I'm just curious as to how you build a museum. What is uh, the plan? Well, if you have in something from old Arlington, that from your grandmother or whatever, an Arlingtonian, then you would just go to our website and email us and you know let us know and you could donate it or or we could just take a picture of it and things of that sort and are you also is the museum uh, have certain kinds of programs or or resources that you know, the museum is offering explain a little bit more about that what what if people are watching now and they want to know um, how they could educate whatever population, um, what kind of programs are available? I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, on our website, we have teaching plans for teachers to learn about Freedman's Village and teach that to their class and other Arlington attributes like the neighborhoods of Arlington and things of that sort. Uh, we also have, we, you, we normally do programs, but since the pandemic has been on, we haven't uh, had anyone do any talks or anything, but uh, we probably will starting this summer. And, and do children from Arlington Public Schools also come to tour? or? Yes, they do. The teachers bring their class, and uh, yes, they do. Okay. come to tour and that would be a special, you know, they would get a special tour on any day that they were available. And are you partnering only with Arlington Public Schools or are there other community groups that you're also reaching out to, to again, educate them about um, the, the black history in Arlington? Uh, yes, we partner with the Arlington Historical Society, uh, the NAACP, uh, the Columbia Pike uh, Revitalization Organization. Uh, we partner with uh, AIM. We partner with uh, every, any and everyone that wants to be a part of us, you know, join with us. And to share the story, to right? To support, true. And why, tell us a little bit more about why you think this is so important for Arlington residents to learn about the history of African Americans who've lived in Arlington County. Has that story been out there very much or is improvement needed? What, what, what do we need to know? Uh, people come and go from this area with the uh, different administrations, you know, as they come and go. So there's a, always a new influx of people that need to learn about what happened here back in the day, in the 1800s, and how this was like the, like, like, New, like Washington, D.C. is still a powerful city, but it was, it was powerful back then, too, when George Washington, before the presidency, before D.C., when, Ele when all of this was Alexandria. And one thing that I was, and, and I noticed it on the, uh, the film, was the involvement of the churches 
that there's quite a few, um, I believe, African American churches. Mm -hmm. And I was, are they also uh, the members of the church, of these various churches, have they played a, a major role as far as the museum is concerned? I was just. Uh, yes, they've given us support and things of that sort, and we've had programs at, the, at, at churches, the churches in the neighborhood. Okay. So yes, we have support, and we're getting the word out through the churches the, that we are established, mm -hmm. and that we have a website that you can go to and learn from there. And it's, and talk more now about future plans. Uh, do you have a timeline as to when you're going to do X or Y or, or what, what's the future plans? Uh, the future plans is for us to have a brick and mortar establishment or be in a building where we can have a su substantial size to put a proper museum in. Have you, are you looking at property right now? Or? Uh, yes, we are in talks with uh, property managers and property management companies and things like that. But uh, nothing, is, uh, sub nothing is in stone yet. And are you planning to, to expand then? You're looking for a lot more space then so that you can have more exhibits at and this, this kind of thing? At this present time, that is exactly what we're doing. Okay. And I guess then, are there other types of museums like this in the area? Is this kind of unique? Um, Alexandria has their Black Heritage Museum, which okay. is funded by the city of Alexandria. So they 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 have a budget from the city every year. Uh, what else? Uh, Prince William has one. Uh, Fauquier County has one. Orange County has one. So there are little pockets in, in the area. Well. Mm -hmm. it, it's nice to know that there are museums like this throughout the whole Commonwealth of Virginia. Mm -hmm. So tell us one more time, how can viewers get more information about the Black Heritage Museum of Arlington? You can go to the website, which is the arlingtonblackheritage.org, um, and that would be the best. Or either just come by the the uh, museum, which is on Columbia Pike, and I'm not sure what the address is, but it's between Glebe and Walter Reed Drive, next to the McDonald's, and next to the, in between the subway and the McDonald's. Well, if they look on the website, they should be able to, Correct. to find it. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I want to thank Craig Syfix, President Emeritus of the Black Heritage Museum of Arlington, for joining me today. This program is broadcast Sundays at 5.30 p.m. and Wednesdays at 6 p.m. on Comcast Channel 69 and Verizon Channel 38 in Arlington, Virginia. Aging Matters is also on the radio. The program is broadcast every Tuesday at 2 p.m. and Friday at 2 p.m. on WERA Arlington 96.7 FM. And be sure to check out the Aging Matters website, which is agingmattersonline.com for more information about all of our radio programs and TV episodes. Thank you for watching the program today. Please join me again for the next Aging Matters show. And until then, remember, age is just a number, not a label.